guys, it's Emma, and I'm back today for you guys with another video. And today, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Today, we are going to be venturing into the depths of my childhood. The books grabbed a hold of fifth and fourth grade Emma and said, yeah, you're here to stay, basically. And those books that started this whole journey are, in fact, the Warriors series by Aaron Hunter. If you've watched my videos, then, you know, you've seen, obviously, the background of, you know, my warrior shelf. I have a specific shelf for my warrior cats because why? They're my babies. The books that I am going to be talking about in this video, in this discussion video, are the first six books, basically. So the first sub-series, and that is... The Prophecy Begins. Now, there are six books in each sub-series, I believe, and obviously we have Into the Wild, book number one. We have Fire and Ice, book number two. We have Forest of Secrets, book number three, which you guys have seen me talk about in my books that made me cry slash tear up video. Then we have Rising Storm, the fourth book. Next, A Dangerous Path, the fifth book. And then finally, we have The Darkest Hour, which is the sixth book. Each subseries, you know, follows a main plot, and the main plot of the first Warriors subseries is a house cat or a kitty pet, as the Warriors call them in the books, Rusty. He dreams of a life in the woods, and he ends up being invited to stay in one of the four Warrior Cat clans, which are just, you know, clans made up of feral cats, and he gets invited to join Thunder Clan. All six books follow Rusty and his journey as he lives in the woods, what he encounters, who he makes friends with, um, nature versus nurture, uh, good and evil. I'm not going to be talking about, you know, each one individually because that would just go on forever. What I'm just going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the, the sub-series as a whole and just, you know, dissecting it and saying, you know, what parts I love the most, what scenes stand out, what characters stand out the most, and, you know, anything else of the like. So, with that being said, let's get on to it. Let's start with my favorite characters, and those have to be Graystripe, White Storm, Brackenfur, and Tall Star. Tall Star is the leader of Wind Clan, one of the other four clans, right? And he is just so fair and just. We meet Tall Star first in Fire and Ice, and pretty much from Fire and Ice and onward, we really see the mutual respect between him and Fireheart. I think he's one of the best leaders that we ever read about. If you know, what Wind Clan goes through throughout the entirety of this first subseries, Wind Clan goes through it, okay? Wind Clan is basically the punching bag out of all four clans, okay? And I don't know, I personally really admire Tallstar just plainly because he keeps his clan together. White Storm? Okay. White Storm, I feel like, is one of the most underappreciated characters in the whole Warriors franchise, and we meet him in Into the Wild. Now, White Storm, he's not really, like, delved into, I guess, but he really does play a part in A Dangerous Path and The Darkest Hour. He's kind of like the uncle figure, and I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. <laughs> um, he's the really cool uncle that, you know, you go to whenever your parents have yelled at you and he makes you feel better. When Fireheart gets, you know, into positions of power, he's always there to help him with it. And White Storm is really just the rock. White Storm is always there with a piece of advice at the ready. Next, we have my baby Brackenfur. Brackenfur is one of the sweetest characters that we ever meet. We meet him in Fire and Ice, and we just see him, we, we literally watch him grow up. We watch him go from a timid little kitten to one of the sweetest and most generous souls ever. There's one part that I love where there's a kit that's born blind and deaf. His name is Snow Kit. Warrior Cats fans, we all know this. Brackenfur comes up to Fireheart and says, hey, if you want, I'd be willing to help mentor Snow Kit because, I mean, I know it's going to be really hard for somebody who doesn't 
have the same disabilities he does in order to teach him, you know, the ways of being a warrior. So if you'll let me, I'll do it. He didn't have an attentive mentor. So he really stepped up and was able to, you know, get past that and was able to mature properly with the other apprentices and ended up being one of the best warriors there is. The last of my favorite characters is ultimately Graystripe. All right, Graystripe is an OG. He is Fireheart's best friend. Firestar, Fireheart, you know, it's interchangeable. <laughs> but he is pretty much Firestar's best friend and they go through everything together. There's a lot that happens to Graystripe that Fireheart just has to sit back and watch happen to his friend. And obviously, you know, the books are from Firestar's point of view. So we never see how Graystripe really deals with what happens to him. For example, he loses his mentor. He loses his mate. He loses his kits. And then to get his kits back, he loses his clan and goes to and goes to another clan that doesn't like him. Um, it's just, and oh my goodness, and don't even get me started on what happens to him later in the series. One pet peeve that I have with the Warrior series is how Graystripe's grief is handled. I feel like we never really address the grief and the sorrow that Graystripe is, you know, entitled to. I feel like, you know, the things just happen to Graystripe and then we focus on Fireheart and then the plot moves along. I love Graystripe with all my heart and he's one of the best he's one of the best best friends of a main character that I've ever read about and he's just gone through so much but every single horrible thing that happens to him he just rolls with it but the entire time he's there for Fireheart like you really see the friendship between them in fact Graystripe and Fireheart are one of the dynamic duos throughout this entire subseries okay we pretty much see their friendship develop from being complete strangers to being brothers and everything but blood like their friendship in my opinion rivals that of Frodo and Sam and that's my hot take the other dynamic duo from you know this subseries is in my opinion one whisker and fireheart one whisker he's a wind clan cat and we meet him in fire and ice you know when we meet the rest of wind clan and one whisker and fireheart's friendship i feel like is it kind of symbolizes the friendship between thunder clan and wind clan and the duo between the two of them they work together to help their clans respectively without you know putting either one of them in danger it's just phenomenally crafted now we're going to talk about another type of duo power couples number one cloudtail and brightheart okay cloudtail and brightheart cloudtail first of all cloudtail gets so much hate for no reason Stop it. <laughs> Stop it right now. His relationship with Brightheart, the, their whole dynamic is just adorable. When Brightheart gets almost mauled to death by dogs, he stays with her the entire time. He has to get yelled at by the medicine cat to leave her alone. He's fierce about what he wants to protect. And Brightheart, she's obviously traumatized by what happened but with cloudtail's help and guidance she learns how to she learns how to fight with one ear and one eye like she she completely transforms herself into being able into being able to be a much stronger warrior than she would have ever been and in my humble opinion cloudtail and brightheart's relationship really just it shows you how <laughs> How powerful love can be and the other power couple children that we are going to be talking about is Sandstorm and Firestar all right Sandstorm is a bad bitch their relationship is kind of promoted to be enemies to rivals to lovers does that make sense and it's executed so well not only that they have such human arguments like arguments that 
you would have with your own significant other. Just the way that they move past each and every obstacle together and they end up, you know, like just their compromises and their sacrifices for each other. I think Fireheart's and Sandstorm's relationship is the exact reason why my standards for a relationship are so high. Next, we gotta talk about the redemption arcs. Well, redemption arcs, but the minor antagonists that, you know, kind of plague Fireheart, but end up turning around and siding with him in the end. And one of those redemption arcs that I feel like needs to be discussed, that isn't discussed enough, is Dustpelt. We meet Dustpelt or Dustpaw, um, in Into the Wild, and again, he's plagued pretty much as one of Fireheart's rivals. Dustpelt and Longtail and Darkstripe, they were allied with Tigerclaw, and when Tigerclaw got exiled, they were just, they were just bitter. And you really see Darkstripe's descent into just pure hatred for Fireheart, whereas you see Dustpelt and Longtail's kind of ascent from hatred to minor annoyance to he may not be as bad as we thought he was. He's actually kind of a good leader. Not to mention Darkstripe was Dustpelt's mentor. You see Darkstripe's influence over Dustpelt. The moment Dustpelt breaks with Darkstripe, he just, it's very telling immediately what side he's on. And I love that he comes to accept Fireheart. And coming to accept Fireheart also kind of leads us into Longtail's redemption arc. Longtail was the one who, in a dangerous path, immediately broke away from Tiger Claw because he was, he s finally saw Tiger Claw for who Tiger Claw was and how and just how wretched he was, especially because at the point where Longtail realizes this, this was when Tiger Claw was going to lead the dogs to the camp and Longtail had overheard it and he went to Firestar immediately and was like, hey, I know neither of us have gotten along, but I'm ready to stop and change that because his entire belief system had been upturned. The moment Fire, the moment Tiger Claw got exiled and Tiger Claw was deemed a villain, I feel like Long Longtail didn't know what to do. Longtail was honest, honestly just so confused because he didn't know who to trust. He didn't know who to follow. He didn't know what was right and what was wrong until he saw what was going to happen to his family, his clan. And that was when he said, you know what? Tiger Claw's obviously in the wrong, so Firestart has to be the other option. And that's what I'm gonna go with. And I so appreciate that. Now, we're gonna be talking about some iconic scenes. I'm like, from the title of the video, it's already spoilery. To be honest, if you've made it this far into the video without being spoiled, props, okay? Props. The first one that we are going to be talking about is the Cloudtail and Brightheart puddle scene. The puddle scene is adorable, all right? The puddle scene is honestly what made me fall in love with Cloudtail. Cloudtail as as I told you before, Brightheart gets mauled by dogs and she loses her eye and her ability to hear out of one ear. And Cloudtail is pretty much the only one that will hang around her because he loves her. They end up going to the edge of the, or you know, the end of the forest where the, where the humans live. And they stop at a puddle and Brightheart looks at herself in the puddle and she's like pretty much repulsed by what she sees and Cloudtail says you're still beautiful to me it's been 11 years bitch and I still haven't recovered that puddle scene is just ultimately iconic in the ways of romance and that scene really cemented power couple status for both of them <sighs> this one is sad but it's still iconic because it's just so memorable it's the scene where Yellowfang dies. Fireheart's like leaning over her and he's crying because we met Yellowfang in Into the Wild. When I said Whitestorm was like the really cool uncle that you love, Yellowfang was the tequila aunt that always acted like she didn't care, but really deep down she cared enough to whack you upside the head if you ever did anything stupid. So what makes her death so memorable is her son's speech. And she tells Fireheart, you know, 
I could never have borne a son like you, even though I wish with all my heart that you would be my son. And it's... Just... Again, it's been, what, 11 years? And that part still breaks me. She's always been there to, you know, slap some reason into you. Yellowfang will always be the mother that Fireheart never had and deserved. The next iconic scene that we're talking about is when Firestar gets his nine lives, all right? And all the minor characters that have, you know, passed on have come back and they've been looped in to give Fireheart his nine lives so he can become leader of the clan. I thought it was a really cool, you know, way to loop back everybody that we've, you know, had to say goodbye to. All the characters that, you know, never really got a peaceful death, for example, Brindleface, Swiftpaw, Lionheart, Redtail, just Running Wind too? Oh my goodness gracious. Like, it's, it, I don't know. I really appreciated how Aaron Hunter looped everybody back so that we got to, you know, kind of say goodbye. I don't know how many times I've said that it was my childhood in this, like, in this video, but honestly, this series, and not only this sub-series, but, like, the franchise as a whole, it was my childhood. Like, I hold this series so dear to my heart. Like, some books made me sob. Some books made me jubilant. And then, you know, there were some books that gave you so much tension that you felt like you were back in your high school math class about to take a test that you hadn't studied for at all. <sighs> I feel like there was just so much packed into this series that just shaped my love of reading into what it is today. And I honestly hope that, you know, other Warriors fans can come on here and, you know, we can discuss some stuff because, in all honesty, I love talking about this series and this video has really helped me to, like, you know, in dissecting everything, it's really helped me to get all my affairs in order. But for anybody that is, you know, in their Warrior feels like me, comment down below which one was your favorite book, who your favorite characters are, what your favorite scenes were. I would love to know. I love talking about this stuff. I hope that you guys are staying safe and I also hope that this video could serve as, you know, like a little break or a little moment of relaxation, moment of humor, moment of, you know, nostalgic revisitation. <laughs> and I honestly hope that you guys enjoyed walking through one of my favorite series with me, revisiting my old friends with me. On that note, from everybody here at Warrior Cat Central, bye.